Well, once again, we say to you, good morning. It's Sunday morning, and uh, we're absolutely so thrilled to just be able to be with you. You know, we wait for days just to get back to you again, and uh, this is amazing. God has taken the church back to the original church mm -hmm. of the book of Acts, and beyond that, where the church met from house to house, and of course, then in the temple, which we're not doing right now. And so we welcome you, and uh, we want to ask you, today, Sunday, I have decreed that this is a special family communion day. In other words, that while the music is playing, if you haven't yet done so, please gather your whole family to a church service. While the music plays, settle down, get your notebooks, Bibles ready, and then directly after that, we're going to be serving communion, and after the communion, we'll get into the Word of God. And uh, Maud here is with me, and uh, she's going to say a few words. Say some now. Well, good morning. You know, our mornings are really getting cooler. The winter, uh, winter is slowly creeping up on us. And I just want to ask you a special favor. You know, we have blankets in our cupboards, and even when we go into the shopping centers and we just pass those, those big racks full of blankets, folk, we need blankets for the winter. We need to distribute blankets, just like we've been distributing food. And, you know, when you pass the church, you can just go there and just drop them off and uh, consider those. You know, when we get into our warm beds at night, I never get in without considering those that don't have the comfort that we have. God bless you. We're going to have an incredible morning. Well, while you're gathering your family together and uh, everybody, I want a real family atmosphere Amen. I want you and your entire household to gather now so that we can give a blessing to you and them all mm -hmm. at once. So very important. Quickly get them together. Let the LFCC band play for you right now and enjoy the music. Worship your God. You're my glory.
Well, there we go. We are, uh, I hope that by now you've got, the Greek word for it is oikos. That means all the people close to you, your household. Amen. It's a word for a household. It's everybody that's with you, like the household of Abraham, like the household of, uh, let's say, Peter the Apostle out there in Capernaum. When you have your household, they come together around you, like the house of Cornelius, then, uh, of course, we can bless everybody at once. So I hope that now and by now the whole family is gathered together. I want to tell you something. You know, I went to uh, St. Peter Galicantu. That is a church in Jerusalem. It's literally on Mount Zion. It is the house of the high priest, used to be the house of the high priest Caiaphas. There stands a church now with a rooster on the top of it. One of the most beautiful churches by many considered to be number one in beauty out there in Jerusalem. And uh, in that place, they have a little store, and in that store they sell all sorts of things. Now, here is something I want to show you I got from there. This here is something with a message. This, if I got it like, I hold it like this, let me just hold it slightly away from my face, so we get it like that. We got it right. I'm just looking at the picture right this is the cross of Jesus Christ. And if we look at the cross, it has an uh, upright, uh, let's, let's call it a pole, and then the sideways. Up stands for your relationship with God. By the way, on this is written the Our Father, so literally piece by piece, the whole Our Father right to the bottom. But up, relationship with God, and then sideways, to both sides, both sides, okay, is that when you, when you uh, see that, it is reaching out to other people. Mm -hmm. There's a special meeting in the cross. If you think about it very carefully, we have the head and the heart of the Messiah on this cross. And you know what he's doing? Like you see the cross beam, the two cross beams, his arms and his heart is wide open to you today and for this purpose there was a communion and for that purpose I wanted the whole family your whole inner circle friends whoever's with you right now watching me as I'm talking about this because God's heart is to reach out look at the cross beam to the left and to the right to the entire world go and preach the gospel to all the earth it is so important that you would realize that that's the purpose of the cross. It's God's heartbeat, the heartbeat of love. And that heartbeat is there towards you today. So we reach out to our families. We reach out to our friends. We reach out to what the Bible calls the oikos, our household. We are believing God that you and your whole house will be saved Amen. and touched today Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, with that having been said, I'm going to go into the communion. I normally just quote the scripture passage, but now I'm going to read it to you. It's from the book of 1 Corinthians. If I turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, and, or actually chapter number 11 and verse number 23. And uh, the Apostle Paul uh, says these words. Let me just get to the right scripture here. Yeah, there we are, and uh, 1 Corinthians 11, and he says these words, For I received from the Lord that which I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night mm. in which he was betrayed, took bread. Mm. This here is the beginning of a new month. Yeah. A lot of people have gone through a lot of problems, mountains, Amen. thorn bushes, you know, thorns in the side, incapacity to move out. It's a big lockdown situation. But God is saying to you, you can multiply. You can be fruitful even where you are. And the church, like you know this coronavirus CV19, that's now contagious, they say, and uh, according to the scientists and all that. But you know what? The church needs to be more contagious and spread the gospel. We start the gospel by getting our whole household into the kingdom of God. Hence my call that you would get everybody together. 
For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and after he had broke it, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. Likewise, the cup after the supper, saying these words, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. That's exactly where we are. We want communion to have a blessing on the month. We want communion to have the covenant power of the blood of Jesus Christ to protect you. We want communion to have success. You see, if God blesses you, you will be a success. Amen. That's what this covenant is all about. You have got the upper hand. You've got the advantage. You're an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. Take that this morning as the word of faith for you and your household. And listen to what I say here. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. That's serious. We need to do an examination. Therefore, the Bible says, verse 28, it says, But let a man examine himself, examine himself, not others, himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, of course, it brings judgment upon himself, and it says, Therefore there are many sick and weak, and some have fallen asleep among you. That sleep there refers to the sleep of death. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. In other words, they have died. Because this unworthy manner is just taking this as a ritual. This ain't no ritual. This is the covenant of the Lamb of God. This is what we're at. Herein lies the blessing of your oikos, your household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Herein lies the blessing of you and your closest friends. Mm -hmm. Herein lies the power of your mm -hmm. whole mm -hmm. household yes. and of you and your household. Mm -hmm. Here lies the blessing to overcome, to be a success in your ministry, in your business, in everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to do. It says, and now it says these words, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we judge, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, then wait for one another next verse. And so what we do now is I've got here the bread and I've got the cup and I'm going to give more a piece of bread first. And we're all going to do this together. I hope that you've got that there by you. If you haven't, then join in on the second service and do it on the second service there, when I do the same night section, as well. just uh, just join us. And Sunday night as well, if of they course, haven't. Sunday night, this Tonight. thing goes on. And have we got a package for the day? I'm telling you like I'm an, like an athlete uh, in the starting blocks, ready to run that 100 meters. And tonight's going to be the double portion. So mm -hmm. here's the bread and here's the cup. And so therefore, we take this. And I just want to pray blessing mm -hmm. over you and your household and then we're going to take the bread and the cup. Father, mm -hmm. the punishment of our peace was upon Jesus. By his stripes we're healed. In him we have the redemption, namely the forgiveness of our sins by his blood. Therefore, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you forgive everybody. Whatever sin they've committed, mm -hmm. iniquity, transgressions, whatever in word and deed, in thought, in action, past, present and future, mm -hmm. forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who have mm -hmm. trespassed and sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let the blessing of Abraham, every spiritual blessing of the heavens in Christ Jesus, come upon all today as they partake of this covenant. Let the power of the covenant of Jesus Christ come into every household watching me. This is a family day. This is a special Sunday. We do it to the glory of God. And we take the bread, and after that we take the cup, and then Maud will say a few words of uh, what she'd like to bless you with also. So let us take the bread and then the cup. While Harold was busy ministering this, I got the scripture here. Uh, I opened the Bible at uh, Matthew chapter 5. And, uh, of course, we have 
the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. And what's very powerful, and he actually prayed it now, but I want you just to repeat this to yourself because we are so desperately aware of where everybody is at right now in this time of captivity. And you will know what I'm talking about. And uh, it says we know the Lord's Prayer. And I want to encourage you to pray the Lord's Prayer every day. When you wake up, when you go to sleep. But there's four little words I'm wanting you to think of. He says, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us. And this is a very important part. Harold has just had the communion. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others. And then deliver us. Deliver us, which is so important. And it says here, and uh, I actually uh, I went before, it says lead us. You see, God has got to lead us out of temptation. He's got to help us to overcome temptation in our lives. And then he's got to deliver us from the power of the devil. Now, just remember those words. Give us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. Again, give us. And this is so powerful. Forgive us. And then lead us. And then finally deliver us. That is the prayer of everybody watching this yeah. service. And I pray that God will truly bless you during this time. Give us, forgive us, lead us, deliver us. And you know that one who says lead us not into temptation. I love the Brit Hadashah, which is the New Testament from a Jewish translation, Jewish Aramaic. And uh, I, I love this where it says in Matthew 6.13, it says, And do not allow us uh, into the power of temptation, but keep us from all evil. Do not allow us into the power of temptation. And you know, today so many people in so many ways are in a position where you know, temptation comes in the form of sin, but also there's a temptation right now to do just wild moves because of the economical situation with the lockdown. Don't do that. Let God lead you. Let God prevent you. Let God not allow you to be tempted by what is wrong in terms of decision making, but also in terms of what is right, so that you can make the right decisions right now. Well, it's time for God's offering. And you know what? It's an action from your heart to God's heart. It's an amazing situation. You know, I look at so many times, it actually, I must say, it, it does upset me when I see how they make just a ritual out of this, when it's a sacred thing that God takes very serious. How serious does He actually take it? Take a look at this. He takes it so much that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave His Son as a living sacrifice on the cross to die for our sins and to redeem us from the power of darkness and bring us into the kingdom of God. He bought us at the price of His blood. That's called sacrifice. That's God's offering. Now it's our turn to make an offering. And God says in the book here of Malachi, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. He takes it serious. The moment you say an offering, the moment you say sacrifice, he's thinking of his son. And in the midst of that perspective, in comes a believer. This is not a ritual. This is serious stuff. When we go in there, that's what Morton and I take it very serious on this issue. Because therein lies the unlocking of the power of the blood of the covenant and the blessing upon us in terms of health and healing and blessing in everything we do, even the mind of Christ leading us in the way of everlasting life, leading us through life and keeping us, guarding that we don't make the wrong decisions right now. Uh, bring all the tithes to the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And uh, then he says, and prove me now there in, in this, in this, you can actually put me to the test in this. That's what he actually says here in the Hebrew. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven, and uh, pour out for you such a blessing that you cannot contain. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. In other words, you, what you're laboring for, 
A lot of people right now are in a position where they really are in a position where they're frantic, they're desperate, they want to get out there, they want to work, they want to earn some bread and butter, they want food on the table, they want to pay for their water and lights, they have to go out there and labor. Let me say this to you, as for me and my house, and I hope to say tonight, uh, today actually, it's not night yet, it'll be night a little bit later on, as, as, as I hope to say to you again even tonight when we serve the communion, that it is vital, it is critical that we enter into this crunch month of uh, May and see to it that we are fulfilling all the righteous requirements that God gave us, that we bring our tithing to restore us, give it to God, and as we give to God tithes and offerings, He brings the blessing upon us. This is also a good time for businessmen to get your business to be blessed. Simply by doing this. A lot of people right now, this is a significant time. You say, you know, somebody phoned me and said, can I, can I bless the church? Well, now is the time. This is the time where we're looking for that. Because church is country-wise. And if you, if you are in a church that's not Little Falls Christian Center, hear me here. Do not bring your tithes to Little Falls Christian Center if you're not a partner of this congregation. If you are part of any other church, Please vigorously and Holy Spirit filled wise give to your church to sustain your church and church leadership that they may serve you, be able to operate and do the work of the ministry. It is vital, critical, essential that the kingdom of God will move on undaunted in a world such as this. At the same time, God brings upon you your house, your finance, your business, your purse, your possessions, your car, your petrol, your uh, whatever it is that you, that you need for sustaining, your bread and butter, that He fills your basket with abundance, overflowing, good measure, pressed down and running over and sustain you in the month of May. That, in the name of Jesus, exactly, precisely as I have now described to you, is what I desire for you and I bless you with that in Jesus Christ's name. It takes one minute to do that and then it's over and then you know that you have fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let the blessing of the covenant of the Lamb in Jesus Christ's name be upon your people right now and sustain them to be in health and to prosper and to be fruitful even as their souls prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, you know, again, I think of the Apostle Paul and I think of how fruitful he was even when he was in a lockdown situation. He was extremely fruitful. He produced in lockdown in Rome the prison letters. Uh, that's Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians and the book of Philemon and I believe also the book of Hebrews because right there in uh, Hebrews chapter number 10, he talks about, think of me also in my chains. And uh, it's an amazing statement. I do believe, in my opinion, the book of Hebrews also written by Paul. Well, that is a thing that scholars are debating about. But if I look at that, look at the style of speech, the style of presentation, not necessarily the style of writing because he could have had people writing for him. But if I look at what he says and the things, it is one book of magnificence, the book of Hebrews. Now, let's get down to it and be fruitful from the house. How fruitful... Again, I go back to the symbol. How fruitful can you and your house be today? How fruitful are you? I've made, in fact, we've got a banner hanging in the front there like a plaque that says, it's a brass thing that's on the wall that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How about you and your house? Will you do the same thing for God? Now, dear friends, I want to take you to the book of Acts chapter number 10. And uh, right now, we're starting with uh, the first verse here where it says, There was a certain man in uh, Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man. That is somebody, Eusebeo, Eusebeus, Eusebeo, which means literally one who is properly committed to God. That is the first thing you must ask yourself. Are you as a household, individually, 
I speak to a household. It's a family day today for us. Are you and your household properly devoted to God? Think about it. Pray about it. Are you praying? Have you prayed today already? Are you praying daily? Are you really praying in the presence of God, seeking His face with a covenant cup, with a covenant blessing, in view of the covenant that we have with the Lord? Do you really, are you really in a proper devotion? You know, in the Jewish world, they talk about um, Tov Shabbat, which means proper repentance. They don't speak about just repentance. They talk about proper repentance, which I love because it is to return to God properly. Are you all with the Lord? You know, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and you believe in your heart that God the Father raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. Now, I'm saying to you today, do you confess Jesus? Do you believe Him in your heart? You believe in Him that God raised Him from the dead? You'll be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your whole household. Oikos, oikodomeo, the people around you, your household, those are your close companions, family and close friends. Maybe they all gather together with you today. Your house becomes a house of the church of God. May God bless you, bless your whole household. May this be the month of blessedness. Yes, there might be a crisis. Yes, there will be a solution. Yes, there might be difficulty. Yes, there will be wisdom to solve that problem. Yes, there might be an uphill. Yes, there comes a major downhill, a major acceleration, a major breakthrough. Tonight, in fact, is the night of breakthroughs. And I'll speak to you at about 6 o'clock. Yes, at 6 o'clock, I'm back with you. And tonight's service, I'm talking about the breakthroughs of God that comes straight into a house. Do you know God can give you a breakthrough? Like the house of Cornelius. Let's take a look at this. It says he was a devout man. That means properly devoted to God. One who feared God. He had reverence for God. The reverential respect and fear of the Lord. That also means he revered God. And with all of his household. That's why we want the whole household present. And he, who gives, he gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. Here we have this man properly devoted with, with the reverential fear of the Lord in his house, in his whole household, gave generously, and at the same time prayed always. There you have the unlocking keys of a visitation of God. A man Properly devoted. Are you properly devoted? He fears the Lord. Do you have the fear of the Lord in your heart? Are you a giver? Are you a generous giver? From your heart, never your head, always your heart. You follow the Holy Spirit in your heart. The prompting of, of what God says to you, whatever figure He ever gives you to give to Him, whenever and wherever, you do just that. You follow the Lord from your heart, a generous giver, and pray continuously. This is what He did. And then we see how that, while he did that, about the ninth hour of the day, that's 3 p.m., he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And what does he say? When he observed him, he was afraid. He said, what's it, Lord? So he said to him, Acts chapter 10, verse number 4, your prayers praying continuously. Listen to me, everybody. Have you got a house of prayer going there? Or don't you have a house of prayer going there? The people in your household, are they praying? Or are they not praying? What's happening out there? Because don't drift away from God now. Not in a time such as this. If you now fall back, it could have a reverberating, a reverberating effect. <laughs> Reverberation into the future. It will impact your future. This is the time to come and be properly devoted to God. To fear the Lord to be generous in your giving, and to always pray constantly to God. Call upon the name of the Lord. Again, to the symbol. It's the vertical, the vertical pole, so to speak, of the cross. It speaks of your relationship upwards. See to it in your household that it's there, that it's in place. God's arms are open to you and all of your household. Well, the story continues. The angel comes here, speaks to him, and he said to him, your prayers and your arms, the two things mentioned, 
He's, he's praying as well as He's giving. Comes as a memorial. You know what that word memorial in, in the Greek says? It literally means a monument. It became a monument before God. God couldn't ignore it. When He looked that way, He saw the monument. It was the monument of a man among the Gentiles that God then chose and in His house there would be a major visitation of the Holy Spirit. And then God gives him the instructions by the holy angel that came there into his house and said, go find yourself a man called Peter. And this man called Peter has to be found. He is in, in a place called uh, Joppa, and he's in the house of Simon the Tanner. And there, now of course, we find that he sends three people, among others, a Roman soldier again, to go to the house of uh, Peter, where he was staying there, wherever he was with people, I don't think that was his own house. His house, house is actually in the house of, uh, his house was in the city of Capernaum. But here we see that he's staying here or residing at a house of Simon the Tanner. And there on the door is somebody knocking. And I'll tell you right now, they have their knees melting when they open the door and there's a Roman soldier outside. But in this case, where it happens, uh, they inquire about Peter, and of course, immediately the Holy Spirit says to Peter, Peter goes on the roof. He has a visitation also. He goes into what the Greek says, ecstasis. That is a temporary cessation of the normal faculties of perception, of sensory perception. In other words, you don't know whether you're in the body, out of the body, whether you are, you know... Um, you, you can't tell the difference. It becomes so real. He sees a sheet coming down from heaven, lowered at the four corners, coming down, in it all kinds of animal, unclean animals. And a voice says to him, Arise, Peter, and eat. And he says, No, not so, Lord. I have never as much as touched any of that stuff over my lips. After all, he's a Jew. And after all, that's not for me. Not that. And then the Lord says something very, very important to him. He says, he says these words, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. So what God decides to unlock, you can't lock. And you must not call that unclean. Right there, because of one man who feared God with his household. In that house, there's a visitation. And in that house... He sees a vision in the Gentile world. An amazing thing. In the house of a Roman soldier. Clearly a Gentile. And now he sends this man. He gets Peter to come. And of course Peter, being led by the Holy Spirit, being told to go down and meet them. Peter now invites them in. They sleep and the following morning they go. So two days later they're down in Caesarea or Caesarea, Caesarea, or Caesarea Maritime, which is by the sea. And now we see how they entered, and Cornelius was waiting for them. And he had called together, Acts chapter 24, all of his relatives and close friends. Did you hear that? In the house again, back into a house, this time of a centurion. Not a very famous man among the Jewish people. But there he had all these people that he loved, his household, his close friends. They're all waiting expectantly. Peter is on the way. They're sitting and waiting. Peter is walking. He arrives. He wants to worship Peter. Peter says, don't do that. I'm a normal man just like you're a normal man. But he has the Holy Spirit upon him and he begins to preach to them. And he gives the testimony of Jesus Christ. How he was crucified and how God raised him from the dead. And then he speaks the famous words of Acts 10 verse 38. He says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Just think about that. That in itself is a loaded statement in Acts 10 verse 38. It's my catch it also. And uh, he says, and we're witnesses of this. He says, uh, which he did both in the land of, of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they killed by hanging him on a tree. We're the witnesses. Peter, according to the Bible here, if you read this passage, he took some people with him. So they were about six people together and they walked and they were witnesses. It was necessary in Act chapter number 11 that they go up to Jerusalem and bring a report of what happened here in the house of this man. Now, the Bible is very clear here 
it says, um, it says uh, uh, those, these words, maybe I should pick it up uh, in verse 41 of Acts chapter number 10. Not all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him, after he arose from the dead, he commanded us to preach to the people, to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, Whoever believes, are you still an unbeliever sitting in that household? Whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. The word remission means literally complete removal as far as the east is from the west completely. As if you've never committed a single sin in your life up to the second and even in your future as you become crucified with Christ dead to sin, alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. My goodness, I want to tell you, these things excite me. While Peter was still speaking these words, Acts 10, 44, these famous words again, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the words, and those were of the circumcision, those people that came and accompanied Peter, who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because of the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak and, and utter in tongues and magnify God. And Peter then immediately responds, Hear these people speaking in tongues. If you're not speaking in tongues, go read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 very studiously. Read it, study it. It says there, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, 1 Corinthians 14, My spirit prays, I pray in an unknown tongue. My spirit prays, but my mind remains unfruitful. How be it then, brethren? 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 and 15. I will pray with the spirit in tongues. I will also pray with the understanding. For he who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. How be it, 1 Corinthians 14, in the beginning, the first four verses, who, he speaks not unto God, but uh, not unto men, but he speaks unto God. How be it, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. So this mysterious language, which God can make understandable at any given second, and uh, this powerful utterance of praying in and by and through the Holy Spirit became part of the New Testament church. In that same chapter, 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says, I thank my God I pray in tongues more than you all. You need to pray in that household today that everybody in your house be filled with the Spirit Study 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Do it for homework. Make sure that everybody can talk in tongues. Lay hands on them. Pray over them. Impart the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's for them, to our children, and even to those who are afar off, to the uttermost parts of the earth as we webcast around the planet. Now, let me say this to you. They heard them speak in tongues and magnify God. And then Peter answered, he says, Can anybody forbid water? So they first spoke in tongues that these should be baptized without, uh, who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So in other words, the green light came from Peter because he saw they were talking in tongues. They were filled with the Spirit of God. Get them baptized. Are you baptized? We're getting ready for the church to return to the church. And we're going to baptize people. You must know it. But now notice this, that this household in totality gets baptized. I'm going to tell you something. This household gets the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This household moves straight into the power of God. Now, the, the situation, if I look at this thing, it opened up a new harvest. We can call it a new dimension. We can even call it a new marketplace, so to speak where the gospel of Jesus Christ could be promoted into the harvest, into all the world. God used a Roman centurion's house, his household, and the impact on a single household shook the world. You know how much you're sitting there in your household today. And if you part, if you're not straight Jewish, and you part of the Goyim or the Gentiles, and you come into Christ, 
you become a Jew because it's written Romans chapter 2 verse 29. He is a Jew, is one inwardly, inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart. I repeat those words, for he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, by the spirit. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, the old things have passed away. All things are made new. Circumcision has taken place. Then the next thing, as they believed, they heard this man. Powerful testimony. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. If you believe in him, you'll receive remission of sins. Everlasting life. Listen. It was so powerful. It had, like you drop a stone in water and you see those ripples go out. It's still going out. From the house next to the sea of a man called Cornelius. A powerful message. Do you know, do you know how powerful your house could be? That's why I wanted the households together. Do you know, however many you are together, if you look at each other for a moment, just give each other a smile there now. And realize, and let this coin drop. It's a gold coin. It's a gold nugget. It's, it's worth the power and the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. And if this coin drops, your house becomes a prayer cell. Your house becomes a home cell. As you invite your friends and those who are close with you and your household and you're saved and you become something like the house of Cornelius, well devoted to God, a man that feared God, who gave generously, a man who was able to pray constantly, continuously, and then God would respond to him through that holy angel says, your prayers and your giving has come up as a monument before the Lord. And then God hears his prayer. He gets a breakthrough prayer. For you and your household, go read Acts chapter number 10, Acts chapter number 11, and 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, and understand those verses that deal with the gifts of the Spirit. Isn't that amazing? The one man, a Gentile soldier, that was represented as crucifying Jesus on the cross. This man sits in his house, and there he is, and he receives Jesus. And when the moment he believes, the Holy Spirit comes upon him, and tongues of fire everywhere. I saw a, a later produced movie, literally of the house of Cornelius. You literally see the fire tongues swimming around. It's one of the most beautiful scenes that I've seen in that particular movie of the baptism of the people of the Holy Spirit right there in the house of Cornelius. Don't you think that's fantastic? Don't you think today. Listen to me today. Listen to me. The gospel has got to be more contagious than a stupid coronavirus. The gospel is the gospel of the wisdom of God. It's folly to those who are on their way to perdition. They have everything to, every little other song to sing. But that's the spirit of the Antichrist. You who believe, let the coin drop. Turn your house into a house of prayer. Turn your house into a place where all your close friends, your relatives, your household, your believers can come together and keep on inviting Turn it into a prayer cell. Turn it into a home cell. Turn it into a cell that reverberates, that spreads out, that goes from those friends that visit you, goes to their homes also and their households, and we see the kingdom of God. It's a contagious Christianity. It's a spreading Christianity. It's a worldwide, billions of people, Christianity. The biggest belief, the biggest faith registered on the planet today christianity is the biggest of all religions and we haven't got a religion again we have a relationship with god a relationship with god like that that's what we've got may god help you may god turn your house into a place of power a house of power a house of prayer a house of blessing a house that is contagious don't sit there don't do nothing. Don't underestimate yourself. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit and you will be bold as a lion. And I'm telling you, tonight is going to be the night of breakthroughs. I'm so sad. Man, I tell you what. I wish you were right in front of me. 
listen to me. Do you want a breakthrough? Then you will not miss tonight at 6 p.m. on this webcast. Because God has got a breakthrough and a plan of escape and a, a plan of victory and a plan of blessing and your whole household can be saved and you can become contagious with Christianity. You can become a vehicle, a vessel of honor. You can become someone whom the potter will fill with the holy oil of the anointing. You can pour out streams of living water. Yes, you, and I'm talking to you today. Let it be done. Communicate with your district pastors. Communicate with your cell leaders. If you don't know, then phone the church. Find out. Find out from your district pastor. If you don't know, phone the church. And there the doors will be open. Because there will be somebody at the reception on Monday to take your calls and to get you to the right pastor. And you can also reverberate in every direction the power of God to all the people in your area. Your whole street block will be saved. Your whole town will be saved. Wherever you live, dear Lord Jesus, make the power of God come upon these people in their homes. In Jesus Christ's name. Loose the power of the Holy Spirit upon these homes. Loose the power of the Holy Spirit upon everybody listening to me right now. Make them contagious with Christianity in the name of Almighty God through Jesus Christ's name. And we all agreed and we said, Amen. Now I want to just take you into something very quickly. It is amazing this man Cornelius was a man who gave alms to the poor. You read it there, Acts chapter number 10. First verses, okay, feared the Lord and he gave alms generously to the poor. We are also giving to the poor and there are some staggering statistics connected to that. If I could just grab all of my computer in a moment, excuse me for that, but I have to just read you this. You can see how we're, I'm telling you now, lockdown is fruitfulness time. That's just like it is. It's just a time of being fruitful. You know, um, if I look at this uh, data, body, you here, just give me the data. Just give me the data. Open it up. Just open up the data. And I'm going to share it with the people. Mori is here. And uh, she could just pass me this and I'll give it to you. We're in a home situation. So this is the home. The people come and go. Mort's here. She's over here, not on that side now. But she's giving it in my hands. And here we have the Etembeni outreach to the poor, giving to the poor. To date, we've received. 400,000 in donations. That is not tithes and offerings. That's specifically to Etambeni because you've got to give your tithes and offerings to, exp to expand the kingdom of God. But just in this, some businessmen, people donated 400,000 in donations, including 100,000 rand for millimil. In America, they call that grits. Here, we call it millimil or pop if you want, and uh, there's a hundred thousand rand of that that went out uh, from Spar at Broad Acres. These people, uh, Michael and Samantha, I want to tell you, those two people are blessed. That's one Spar in this country out there by four ways that is blessed beyond measure. And uh, they gave uh, also some uh, hundred thousand rand of millimil uh, donation from Spar Broad, Broad Acres totaling 50 tons of food that have been distributed in, distributed in the small period of time now, past, past three weeks. 150 tons, 50 tons of food went out to the poor. See, we're not playing games. And another 30 tons has also gone out. I just bought... Maud says another 30 tons goes down to White River also. So, let me tell you that. This is just the home situation. That's why I can talk like this. Another 22 tons is being delivered to the White River. It's actually 30 tons. The White River ba ba branch of Ethambeni and to be distributed from next week down in the Lowfeld and Pumalanga in South Africa, next to the Kruger National Park. Soup kitchens also reopening in six districts to feed the poor. People in those districts, those mothers get up early and they prepare the food, and then all the people come, and they, they give them food. We deliver the food to them, and then they prepare the food. They give it out in soup kitchens, reopening six districts. People are coming in, 
at schools all over. We are serving the community. We don't play games. I never play games. All right? And it says here, we'll be serving on the sidewalks to all who bring containers. That's going to happen out there. We are... Whew, a house of prayer. We tried again. A house of prayer and a house of giving. It's what we are. Serving on the sidewalks. All who bring containers. Now we're going to look at a little video here. You want to see how these people are living. This is the house of Stompy in Zenzele. Just take a look at this video and uh, then uh, I'll be back with you. This is my house. This is my little kitchen. So you, the kids sleep over here, hey? Yes, all of them are sleeping there. Besides the small one, I'm sleeping with the small one here at the side. Okay. Yes, this is my house. This is my little kitchen. Mm -hmm. So tell me something, if it rains, does it leak in here? Yes, it does. It leaks in here. Yeah. Okay, with the Full dish, water, eh? yes, with yeah. the dish, water. Inside, yeah. Yeah. The Inside whole family. the house, the whole okay. family. Yes. Thank you for showing us. Thank you for sharing with us. Well, there we are. That concludes this morning, except for one thing. The Little Force Christian Center Band. I love this band, and they've got some stuff that's real good for you. So take it away, Molly and the band.